Hey all, so this video is going to be to explain my Identify DMX Line plugin. Uh, the concept is that you can take your DMX line in your rig of unknown origin, uh, plug in a data tester, and see the universe number pop up on your screen. Um, I've been doing a lot of install stuff lately, so uh, for cruise ships specifically, and so I'm always walking into rigs where, you know, I wasn't there for the original install. So I've got this, you know, DMX line hanging out of the ceiling, coming out of the wall. I can't trace it. I've got no idea what it was there for. Um, and I've got to figure out, you know, if I can use it for what I need or not. So I made this plugin to kind of help facilitate that process. Let's pretend I said that right. Um, it's also good for, let's say you have uh, fixtures with uh, Artnet in that spit out DMX, uh, seeing if it's, you know, spitting out the right universe. Um, I was using path ports on these installs a lot, so I would use it to check if it's actually spitting out the universe that it looked like it should be uh, before the firmware update. Uh, for NSPs and NPUs, uh, basically anything that takes uh, Ethernet, uh, DMX over Ethernet protocol and turns it into a DMX line. Uh, like I mentioned, it does require a DMX tester or something that will show you the information being carried down this line in some form. So, without further ado, well, let's... Let's start fresh here. So we are going to, uh, oh, sorry, my setup. Um, my DMX tester here is going to be the DMX Cat. Uh, I have the software for it pulled up on my iPad, iPad here, as you can see. And I am using uh, an NSP as a four port node set to outputs, you output universes one, two, three, and 16, which will make sense in a moment. So let us begin. Uh, so we're going to import our plugin uh, and straight out here, not going to change anything. We're just going to go ahead and run it. Starting universe default setting uh, is one. Uh, last universe 16, and we're going to run with that. And we can see on this screen here that it is running. Uh, I'm going to change the DMX cap back to decimal. So I am plugged into the first port right now, and we can see that the number one is flashing on the first channel of this universe. If I swap over two, line number two, we have a two flashing in that spot. Super exciting. Bet you didn't see that coming. Three. Guess what? It's a three. And last but not least, the big old number 16. All right. I know you're super excited right now. So, uh, so that's the basic functionality of it. Uh, I'm going to turn that off. And like I said, we can do, you know, different from the defaults. So let's try one through 64. Ta-da. You can see here that we are doing, uh, universes 1 through 64. Uh, if you go beyond that, it will start to slow down. I've put some s mechanisms in there to keep it from crashing the software by overloading it with commands. So if we run it again with 1 through, uh, let's say 255, we'll max it out. You can see that it's going to kind of refresh at a slowed rate. Huh, it's actually not doing it in blocks right now. Anyways, it breaks it up into blocks of 64 and puts some gap in between them so that your MA does not crash. Um, I think it just did. There it goes. Anyways, all right, so we're going to off that. Uh, and when you turn it off, so while it's on, it's going from zero to the value that matches to your universe. Uh, when you turn it off, it actually releases all those, so you don't have to worry about it getting stuck in whatever in a zero or that number. So we're going to edit this. Uh, and at the top, towards the top here, we have the user configuration setting section settings. Um, I'm going to take this in reverse order. The very bottom setting is sleep period. This is just the number, the, the amount of time it takes between it flashing the number and flashing zero. You shouldn't need to change this, but I left it here for whatever reason. Um, readout percent. So this will change it. So right now what we just looked at was it showing us the uh, decimal values of the DMX. So giving you the value from zero to 255 of what is coming in on that channel. If you want it to display in percent as MA defaults to, uh, and if your reader happens to go to that, we can change this to true. And I've left, I've tried to leave notes for everything, uh, all your possible settings for all of these to make it as clear as possible. Um, so we're going to set that to true, save, run it, enter, enter. And we can see, so we see we don't have weird numbers. It's just going 1 through 16. And if we look at our data tester, which is giving us a message now because I haven't paid for the software yet, um, we have a 40 flashing instead of 16, even though we're on line 16. Thankfully, uh, the DMX cat has a wonderful little setting here for me to change into percentage mode. And in that mode, we see that we have a 16 flashing there. If I move over to line three, we will see a three. All right, that will concern me for a moment. And move over to one, we see a one, ta-da. All right, so that's what that setting does. 
Uh, if we go back in here and go into, hold on, let me reset this uh, video thing real quick. All right, and we are back. Uh, by the way, the program is X Mirage. It's like 16 bucks. I'm probably going to get it if I need to use it for another video. So there, they got some free advertising. All right. Yeah, yeah, shut up. All right, so um, the last setting, we just went through readout percent. So the next one is match channel. So we're going to change this one also to true. And what this one does is, so you're no longer going to see it flashing. Uh, the value of the channel is no longer going to be the uh, universe number. It is the channel number itself that is going to correspond. So let me make that make a little more sense than my uh, should attempt at speaking. So we can see universe uh, channel one is now flashing from zero to full. If I pop into DMX line two, <clears throat> we can see that it is channel two now that is flashing. So let's say you have something that gives you a readout more like this. This might be a lot more handy for being able to see what channel do you have activity happening on in your DMX line. So uh, if we pop over to 16, you know it's gonna do the same thing except it's kind of harder to count 16 spaces over. So there is that feature. That is off that. All right, and then the last uh, bit here is a table uh, list called ignore universes. So what this does, so on the ships that I was doing installs on, they always used Universe 1 for uh, dimmers and contactors. So basically everything that was running uh, AC. Um, so I didn't want to be flashing a value that might be sending power on and off to something repeatedly for extended periods of time. So I put this in here so that no matter what you have contained in your range, whatever universes you enter into this bit, um, are always ignored. So we're going to do universes one and three. If you want to put more than one, you separate with a comma, keep them inside the brackets, spaces, no spaces, double spaces, it doesn't matter. Um, so we'll save that. Let's run it the same as we did before, one through 16. And we see we get a little warning message here that tells us, hey, you know, these are set as ignored in your user config section, uh, just so you don't forget it there and then end up wasting a lot more time trying to figure that out. So, uh, we just click OK on that and it's already running. We can see that we have skipped uh, universes one and three um, and it looks like we're still in match mode, yeah. So, <clears throat> oops, sorry, let me go back here. So, um, yeah, so I'm in line 16, we still, we still see that. I'll pop it into line two. Line two is working as expected. If I pop it into line three, nothing, because it's ignored. And line one, same thing, we shouldn't see anything and we don't. And that's that feature. So if we turn that off, we can come back here. We can change it to just one universe, which is also universe one. And it tells us only universe one is being ignored. We can see it's only universe one and so on and so forth. So that is, uh, that is the identified DMX line plugin. Now you can download this plugin and others at my website. You can contact me on there or through Facebook. Uh, there's a mailing list form on the website. You can subscribe here, yada, yada. You know how to contact people, um, but just, you know, to stay up to date. So I hope you find some use for this. Uh, stay tuned for more things and stuff that I may create. And thanks for watching.